Last night when I received the call, um, late evening, that there was, there was gunshots up in St. Monica's, I, knew, I realized that um, uh, peace was disturbed again by tragic events. So when I got up there and realized that it was actually a tragic, it became a fatality. But my heart goes out to the family of the young man, to his, to his mother and his brothers, his siblings, you know, his friends, his family, because we have, we have lost another family member. Every one of us belongs to somebody. So my heart was heavy. And when I got up there and realized that, I, I noticed too that our community wasn't out in force. What, what do I'm, you mean by that? Well, what I mean is that I've been around for a while as an MP. And unfortunately, I've seen a few of these events. And I recall vividly that when I used to see the events that happened a few years ago, our community was out. Everybody was out on the street wanting to find out what's happening. And I remember saying then that it's important that we get on top of this, this problem, be it social, be it economic, be it racial, whatever it is, we as a community need to find out because we're going to become complacent. And last evening when I ran up to St. Monica's, when I ran up to Ben Room Lane, I should say, I recognized and realized that it wasn't a whole lot of community. Could it be fair, though, fair well, coming outside? There are, there are more than one reason. Um, fair, I hate to say it may be a little apathy. Some people are just saying, well, you know, um, they're getting used to it. It's like hearing that first gunshot. But now after you've heard 300 gunshots, it's kind of, it, it, it kind of changes, changes the dynamic. But the fear element, we can't take that lightly because our young and old now are becoming fearful, fearful of, of, of uh, associations because most of our uh, people are not into untoward behavior. But it's who you are associated with could, could make you a target. So I, I do understand that fear is a driving force of um, people not wanting to get involved. Now, Mr. Reek, some people are saying the community has given an outcry against um, immigration, against same-sex marriage, against gambling, against government. But why not against this violence? Well, I'll tell you what, and we have to be frank with it. Right now, it's black on black crime. There's a lot of our young black men that are dying. I mean, almost 100% of the victims have been black, if, if I am correct. And we have to recognize this here as a state of emergency. This here was, is, is, is as important, or should have been on the docket before same-sex marriage, before the immigration issue. And I'm not taking away any any the importance of any other topic but this is a national crisis and and i call out to our churches at, at last count i'm i'm looking at as almost 250 churches in bermuda from one end of the island to the other we need to have the churches take a, a major role in this area we, we, we can look at the government to, to solve this area. now i actually spoke to pastor hassel last night of her chapel who agrees that more can be done and he thinks part of the problem is that no one knows what to do. Mm -hmm. Any suggestions? Well, we could start with some think tanks. We need some pastors, we need some teachers, we need perhaps some policemen, we need some politicians. We need to get people from all different walks of life. We need some everyday parents mothers and fathers to sit down, sit around the table and come up with some solutions. Because I, I would venture to say that all those young men came up in our churches. You know, the, the biggest advocate for our community historically has been the church. And it would be good if the church does take, take a leading role. Now, 35, 36 black men since 2007, the most, the majority being murdered from 2009 onwards. Yes. Are our black men, young men becoming extinct? A young black man, I don't know if they're becoming extinct, but the lives have become devalued. And we have to, to recognize that and rectify them. Because these young black men belong to somebody. They belong to us, not only their immediate family, but we as a community are one big family. And, and we have to come up with why the lives, the value of our, our young black men are becoming devalued. Now another sentiment is that 
the right person hasn't died. It's going to take for a young person, a policeman, a politician, just someone deemed important before anyone thinks that it's time to do something. What do you say to that? I, I have a, my view is this here. I wear different hats. One, I, I wear a hat as a politician, but that hat comes, comes long after. My hat of a father, a son, a brother. So I understand out in the community that every life matters. Our, our young black lives, they matter. And it's more than just a slogan. And unfortunately, if, if, if what it takes, people are saying that, that uh, somebody of a different ilk, be it somebody who's deemed to be important or white, has to get shot first, right? I tend not to, do, uh, not to agree with that because the black community is strong enough to, deal, to come together and deal with this and, and I'm not finger pointing, but no just one, one organization can fix this here. Government can't fix it on its own. The police can't fix it. I remember a time when the black community was the strongest organ. We had the strongest voice because we looked out for each other. This world's got to start in our churches, in our homes, in our neighborhoods. We know whoever knows, knows something has to, has to speak on. If you know something, say something. It's up to us.